in the last stream, we were working on the Biomancy mod, trying to unlock a way for us to make the nutrient bars that we started the pack with as a fantastic food source that's going to allow us to use the Blood Altar more frequently going forward. Biomancy is also required to kind of finish this first section of the quest book because we need to get a diamond before we can move on to the pain section of this pack. Now, what I want to start with today before we get going with more biomancy is I first want to look at kind of fixing or upgrading our storage situation because right now we've got two double chests and they are pretty full. You'll see my inventory is also kind of full of random junk and that is because I don't have any chest space to deposit that random junk. And so one of the quests in the quest book here is for a big boy colossal chest. And this is where I want to start here. So the quest just wants us to make a colossal chest core. Between streams, I did do a little bit more oak farming, which is why there was dirt here just a second ago. But for those who don't know, the colossal chest is essentially just a massive chest that is customizable in its size. The core itself, super easy. It requires a colossal chest wall, which is just planks and logs. Also easy enough, we'll make quite a few of these. I actually don't know if we'll have enough wood to make a uh, small colossal chest, but we're gonna try. And then the core itself is just one colossal chest wall with an iron ingot. Iron, we do have, but it is currently over in this chest here, which is getting very close to being full, which is not necessarily a bad thing. I guess we can go ahead and uh, take some of these nuggets of experience and use them to acquire experience if we wanted to free up some space. And at some point in the not so distant future, we should definitely look at automating the washing of at least the raw ores here so we can get some of those resources coming in automatically. For now though, let me quickly move the campfire. Let me throw down the stack of iron and let me go ahead and drop some water in front of the fan like so. That should get us all the iron that we need for the colossal chest. The smallest size of which I believe is a three by three by three. So for that, we're going to need quite a lot of colossal chest wall. And for that, we're going to need a lot more planks actually. So how many of these can we make? 24 is probably not going to be enough we'll start out with the three by three it's not too difficult to increase the size of the colossal chest in the future the colossal chest is also hollow in the middle as well so we just need two more actually two more walls one for the core and one for the final bit of wall that we're going to make so for that we're going to need 16 planks that's easy enough we'll take two of these and assuming we have iron over here which we do fantastic let's take all that let's craft up those nuggets into ingots like so and ideally we'll do all of them fantastic that gets us the colossal chest core and if we put both of these down over here boom and boom we get ourselves a fairly small colossal chest now the benefit of this is that it's much much bigger than a standard minecraft chest in fact if i do a one tick scroll one tick scroll moves one line of inventory down so it's kind of hard to see without items in here but i can scroll here and there's quite a lot of space in the inventory here. You can see on this bar at the side. So you can put a lot of stuff into this chest. The only downside for now at least is that there's no search option in here. So you can't uh, search inside of the chest. What we can probably do though is uh, double click on the search bar at the bottom and that will then search the inventory. So now if I type in, uh, for example, bottle, it will highlight the bottle in this chest. We might have to do a bit of scrolling to try and find it but it should make it a lot easier for us to just take all of the stuff that we have and dump it into this chest. And I also think, actually, now that I think about it, what we might be able to do here, we might be able to work with the crafting station in the same way that this chest here is currently accessible to the crafting station. Let me try one thing first. If I take this and I place it down next to the colossal chest core, Look at that, it actually works, that is madness. But it does mean now, I believe, that if we wanted to craft, let's say, a block of iron for some reason, instead of having to go and find the block of iron inside of the chest here, we should just be able to shift click in the recipe and it's gonna pull all of the iron out of the colossal chest, which makes it substantially better, in my opinion. Now, in hindsight, I probably should have put the core one further down. The core doesn't have to go in the middle like this, but I wasn't really thinking about putting the crafting station next to it at the time. So for now, we're gonna have to live with a floating crafting station, but we also can just go ahead and take all of the items that we have, dump them all into here, and going forward, our crafts should be substantially easier. All right, so once everything has been moved over, we can now pivot over to the next thing that I want to work on, which is still not biomancy. The next thing that I would like to work on 
is botany pots. We do have botany pots in the pack here, and they're not too difficult to make. They require some terracotta and a flower pot, which of course is just bricks, and all of that is basically just clay. I do believe that we should have some clay in our chest here, we do indeed, and with that, we should be able to make a couple of botany pots. Let's start with just the one. We'll take five clay, and we'll start smelting that up. We'll also put three clay in there to make three bricks. We are going to need some kind of fuel to make that work. We should probably start using some of the massive amount of coal that we have available to us in here. And I was really hoping we might be able to smoke the terracotta. Unfortunately, we still don't have a bucket of lava, and so we are going to have to stick with the furnace for the time being. But the benefit of the botany pot here is that it's going to allow us to automate the growth of really whatever crop we like. And there are quite a few crops at this point that I think we could do with automating the growth of. Bamboo is going to be quite useful because, as you can see, between streams, I have gone ahead and duplicated the number of pandas that we have in this enclosure using both the bamboo to breed the pandas and the animal crop here to grow more pandas. And we're going to have to kill quite a few of those today to hopefully get further in the biomancy mod. The same is true with the wheat over here, having that come in automatically. It would be nice. It's not necessary because we can grow the crops very quickly ourselves, but having it done for us will just save us that little bit of time. Also, things like wood. We can use botany pots to automate the growing of saplings, which is going to make it easier for us to expand our base and just to craft in general going forward. And on top of that, we might want to automate the production of things like these fungi here to allow us to get these shroom lights, because looking a little bit further ahead, once we have the decomposer, we then need to use the decomposer to get gem fragments, bioluminescent goo, and exotic dust. And the bioluminescent goo is acquirable through shroom lights. It is acquirable through other ways. We can use redstone, but you'll see that we get zero to one bioluminescent goo from redstone, whereas we can get five to nine from shroom light. And if we can have those shroom lights coming in automatically from fungi, that would be ideal. And looking down here at the exotic dust, we can also use the fungus to get that exotic dust as well. And so I think that could be a useful investment. Let's do something like this to get that smelted. Ideally, I think we are going to want to get more than one hopper botany pot. The, uh, the difference between the regular botany pot and the hopper botany pot is that the hopper botany pot is kind of capable of doing work automatically, whereas you have to manually harvest with the botany pots. I would definitely recommend the hopper botany pot like nine times out of 10. And if we're going to make more of these, we are basically going to need a fair bit more clay. And so real quick here, I think we can probably just wash a decent amount of sand, which as per usual, we can get from gravel. So I don't know if we have any gravel in here, actually. We totally do. Let's take that. Let's run it through the, uh, the crushing wheels here, and then we'll wash it into some more clay. And then we'll look at smelting that clay into more terracotta and more brick. Okay, so a little bit of copper washing later, because it turns out that is a much better way of getting clay because there's a 50 percent chance that each one of the raw copper gets you a clay ball we now have a good amount of brick and we have more terracotta smelting as well and what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and make our first botany pot which should be fairly straightforward boom and i might as well craft all of those actually and boom i am trying to get enough resources here for five hopper botany pots and of course as we saw before to upgrade this from a regular to a hopper all we have to do is craft the hopper with the botany pot Nice. So now that we have the hopper botany pot, basically what we can do here is we can go ahead and take, let's say, a regular Minecraft chest. We can place that down, let's say, right about here, and we can place the hopper botany pot directly above it. From there, all we need is a little bit of dirt. We can put that in like so in the bottom slot. I am fairly certain that if it hasn't been changed, that tilling the dirt into farmland makes it slightly faster than it otherwise would be and then from there what we can do is we can just take something like a sampling for example here and right click that onto the top slot of the pot and you'll see if we uh, zoom in that that is going to start very slowly but surely growing into a tree and when it fully grows it will then automatically be harvested and it will deposit its wares into the inventory beneath it and uh, we can see here in JEI that every time the cycle is complete, we have a 100% chance to get between two and four logs. We have a 10% chance to get between one and two sticks, and we have a 15% chance to get one sampling. And that's fine because it's really the wood that we're after. And so essentially now the plan is to do the exact same thing that we've just done here, but with wheat, with bamboo, and potentially with the two different kinds of fungus, which should be pretty easy for us to make because in a previous episode, we did get nether essence, which I assume we're now out of. Did we use all that nether essence? It's quite possible that we did. 
even if we did, we can, of course, make more Nether Essence using the Netherrack. That is, of course, how that's done. We do have Netherrack here. Let's take two of those. Let's put both those into the Blood Altar. We'll do one and two. Uh, not two, because I do not have enough LP in my system. That is fine. Let's try that again after we do a quick one of those. And, of course, on top of that, we are also going to need to get some Nature Essence as well to make this work. We'll take some Kelp here, and we'll do one, two three and four fantastic that should be everything for the crimson fungus and for the warped fungus nice over here our terracotta is done fantastic let's go ahead and make four more botany pots and then if we have the iron for it which i believe we do let's also go ahead and make ourselves four more hoppers and from there we can of course get the extra hopping botany pots and then we can go ahead and put those down over here the twitch chat is pointing out that you can use storage drawers here and the storage drawers can be more beneficial for sure instead of using a regular chest because of course this chest is going to fill up pretty quickly so one thing we could do if we wanted to is we could look at the uh, crimson fungus here this has four outputs and so if we made a two by two storage drawer one of these ones right here again we want it in the uh, the dark oak color ideally to match the base theme for that we are going to need more chests that's fine four chests will do the trick and then we do have enough dark oak i believe to make that happen fantastic so if we do the same thing here with the hopper pot on top like so dirt inside uh, till the dirt and i'll show you that in just a second if we uh, look in jei here at the botany pot oh this requires crimson nylium to grow interesting so we'll come back to that in just a second the um the oak sampling though that we put in there the dark oak sampling you'll see this grows at different speeds depending on the farmland used and regular dirt is 1x speed it's kind of the baseline of speed whereas the farmland here is 1.05x speed so it's five percent faster it's not a massive difference but it's not nothing and it will make our production just that little bit faster and so really at this point the only thing left to do here is to see if we can't get the crimson and warped nylium here which we definitely can it's just going to require more nether essence and more nature essence which should be fine because we can get more netherrack utilizing the uh, cobblestone and blood system and although we don't have any more blood here we do have some life points spare we can of course drop those into a spare glance bottle which as we know is over in here also real quick initially i was under the impression that this chest couldn't be sorted but it turns out that it's just kind of delayed you'll see it does appear to be quite nicely sorted what i mean by that is that uh, over here if your chest is a mess you can press the middle mouse button to automatically organize it without having to do it manually in here if i take some coal and i move it all the way down to the bottom here if i middle mouse click it doesn't change anything but then if i leave and i come back in you'll see that that is now gone so it did move it just didn't update so just be aware of that if you're trying to organize your colossal chest either way let me go ahead and get that glass bottle out of here and then let's use that to acquire what's in here and then real quick let's make some more nether essence to make the required nyliums all right so i've acquired 10 more nether egg here which is not actually enough to make the crimson nylium and the warp nylium for that we would need 12 however the twitch chain has made a good point here in that we can actually use the nether egg to make the nether essence and we can use nether essence to make more nether rank because it takes eight nether egg to make eight nether essence and then eight nether essence makes 24 nether egg the only cost there of course is life points and so on a quick detour here we can make the uh, incense altar this guy from blood magic which is fairly easy to make it requires one charcoal and then stone cobblestone and the weak blood orb that we made in the last episode the only thing we don't have there is a charcoal this is a pretty nifty little device that is going to allow us over time to get a lot more life points out of our sacrifices but now it's just going to give us i believe a 20 percent boost to the amount of lp that we get so i believe that just placing this down next to the blood altar should allow us to gain its benefits you'll see right now that our sacrificial knife is now glowing and the way this works is that when you have the altar down instead of taking one heart at a time it will go ahead and just take all of your hearts apart from one but it will just generate all of the life points and put them all in automatically and i believe that by default just with the incense altar down you get a 20 percent bump to deposits so like i said before instead of getting 200 lp you're going to get 240 now there are 
upgrades you can make to this you can make them the now there are upgrades you can make to this you can make this much larger it has a whole multi-block structure that allows you to get even more life points from it and of course there are rune upgrades we can make but this was just a nice quick little way for us to get more out of our current lp setup and to make our giving a little bit easier and a little bit faster because now we can give all of our hearts at once and we don't have to worry about stopping at the exact right moment so as to not die and so now we can begin to turn all of our netherrack into nether essence and then we'll use that nether essence to get more netherrack we're gonna need so many life points for this stuff geez that is gonna take a little while actually to the point where i think for now it's probably still better actually to just do this and um, and turn one bucket of life points into 10 more netherrack because the alternative is to spend eight buckets of life to get 24 netherrack but then to spend even more life to get the uh the niliums that we need so i think for now until we have an even better way of uh, getting life points more efficiently we should probably stick to this setup for netherrack boom and boom all right so we've got our warped nilium we do have the netherrack required to get the crimson nilium but we don't currently have the life points to get the nether essence so we'll come back to that at some point in the not so distant future over here we can I believe you can get this out of course you can it's like this and like this fantastic we can put it in the warped fungus and now this will slowly but surely begin to grow and begin to produce for us all of these items here including for us somewhat importantly the shroom light and of course more warped fungus that we can use for biomancy so speaking of biomancy let's see if we can finish this section of the quest book so the thing that we were working towards at the end of the last episode was the decomposer for the decomposer we need for beef, we need a living flesh, a bile gland, and two sharp fangs. So I think the sharp fangs were really the limiting factor for us, and it took us a little while in the last episode to um, to get the required sharp fangs because it took so long to get the pandas. Now, thankfully, between streams, as I mentioned, I have been breeding those pandas and growing some more of them, and so we do currently have quite a few of them ready to go. For that, of course, we are going to need the burn cleaver, and uh, real quick, let's eat some bread as well. And let's see if we can't get a um a, a fang or two here so i'm gonna move the pandas out to attack them just to give us a bit more space and just so that we don't uh die to the pandas ideally and i'm hopeful that we get a little bit more lucky this time there we go on the sharp fangs so once we have two of those we did just get a, a bile gland as well which is fantastic we should be pretty close we of course have the beef and we've got more cows as well should we need them we do need to get more living flesh which as we saw last time we can get using that potion of healing on the cradle real quick let's see if we can't make that happen again how much beef do we have in here we've got three beef i do think we're going to need more than that again thankfully we do have access to all of these cows over here and we can utilize our oh do we uh, i guess we can utilize the x but the cleaver is probably a better idea just because we do get a couple of extra biomancy specific items that i think we could use in the future and then just like last time let's see about feeding the beef here to the cradle and then once it's full, we'll grab one of our potions of healing. Use that like this. We might have to use a second one. I'm a little annoyed because we did just use a potion of healing on ourselves. I, I gave it a test when I was uh, getting the life points for the nether ink, but it's not particularly great. I think I'm going to have to make another potion of healing here because I don't think that one is enough. It does only say one in here, but I think two are required in order for this to actually work so let me quickly see if i can't get another potion of healing a quick note here the twitch chat has pointed out that we can just right click the glance bottles directly onto the basin to pull the potion of healing out we don't have to go through the spout like we did in the last episode either way back over here that's our second bottle and it's now doing its thing fantastic the twitch chat has also told me that we should feed the flesh blob because if we feed it oh there you know i gave it one piece of meat that's fine it gets bigger can i feed it again i can please don't please don't please don't jump off the edge <laughs> okay thank you can you eat again you can eat again i don't know how much we want to feed it i'm also a little worried that it's gonna jump off the edge here it looks a little silly oh yeah we can pick it up that's true and we could just kind of for now put it inside of the the panda cage i wonder if you could breed those that'd be interesting either way let me uh, come over here let's get a few more bits of uh, of beef and then let's see if we can't make it just a little bit bigger i don't know how big it can get but i'm being told that we get more drops from it if it's larger so let's take our plethora of beef here and let's see if we can't make this guy just a little bit bigger
Oh, yeah. No, he's getting bigger, all right. Okay, so this guy is real big now. Uh, so big that I can't actually pick him up anymore, which is interesting. I don't think that he's going to attack me, but just to be safe, I would like to get a little bit more food so that we, we don't die if we take like a single hit from a rogue panda or something. And uh, especially given how easy it is for us to get wheat here, getting bread is a no-brainer. And I do want to keep an eye on him as well, make sure he doesn't fall out of that pen. I don't think he can jump out of there, but I've been told by the uh, Twitch chat that maybe he can. And so let's just do a quick inventory dump here. We'll get rid of some of the stuff we don't necessarily need on us. And then let's see if we can't get rid of this guy. I was hoping to move him back out using the carry-on mod, but it seems like that is not going to be uh, the case for us. I'm, I'm very worried about hitting, yeah, peripheral pandas in this scenario because uh, they do attack back on like the, uh, the blob, which is not ideal here. Um, I also don't know how long the pandas hold grudges for. Hopefully not too, too long. Um, it does have a lot of HP. Oh, if we do a, a critical hit, it looks like we can kind of focus our attacks just on the flesh blob, which is ideal. And we do get five living flesh there from that, as opposed to just the one that we got last time. And so I do definitely think that's probably worth doing, just so we don't have to go through the whole process of making the potions quite so many times. Now that we have those fleshy bits, let's pop back over to here and see if we have what it takes. So we did need two fangs. We currently have one fang. I don't think we had another fang in here. And so actually I say that we don't quite have everything yet because we do need to get one more fang, which ideally we'll get from one more panda, although I don't have my hopes up given the uh, the track record from the last episode, but I'm hopeful that if we are somewhat lucky, we'll get one somewhat quickly. We actually got three sharp fangs from one panda. That is substantially better than our odds in the last episode. Either way, now that we have the fangs, we should be able to make the decomposer. We can, nice. So let's throw this guy down as well, next to our other fleshy bits. And these do have an interface actually, this guy doesn't, but these two do have interfaces that I didn't see in the last episode. So we can use the decomposer now to help us get to the digester because the digester is what we want if we're going to get nutrient bars. So for the digester, we need living flesh, which we now have, flesh bits we now have, bone fragments we don't have, but we can make with nether quartz and nature essence, elastic fibers and bile. So the elastic fibers, I believe, are what we wanted here. We can use our decomposer, I believe, to turn some of our beef here. Does beef work? Let me press U on this and go over to the decomposer. It doesn't, unfortunately. That is not ideal. What can we decompose to get elastic fibers? Uh, there's also the bile as well. We can thankfully turn a bile gland into bile. So we do have three bile glands here. If I just put this in, it does require food, like all of this stuff requires food to work. Uh, so you'll see if I press U on this, then in the decomposter, it says negative one. I believe this is the amount of food required. So in here, you'll see it's at zero out of a thousand nutrients. If I put one piece of raw beef in, it gets two nutrients and it can use one of those nutrients to turn this bile gland. Oh my goodness, it makes a horrendous sound, <laughs> but it can use one of those to turn the bile gland into anywhere between four and six bile, uh, anywhere between one and three fibers actually, and between two and three flesh bits. So we did get two fibers there, which is not bad at all. And if we want more elastic fibers, is there a better choice for us? Oh no, we do have the sinew, of course, we've got quite a bit of it. This is why early on it was well worth using the cleaver on the cows as opposed to using uh, an axe or a sword because we get the sinew as a byproduct and it gives us four to eight fibers. Five might be enough actually. It isn't, we're at seven, that's unfortunate. That means we are gonna have to put in another one of these and another beef as well. And uh, the same is true over here, you put beef in like this and that allows you to do crafts. Again, you'll see here, once we have all the required items in our inventory, we should be able to complete this craft. The only things we're missing are the flesh bits which we can get, easy enough. And then we need the elastic fibers, which we now have. We actually got eight from that one endeavor. And then now it's just bone fragments. Nether quartz, we might have. We do indeed, one, two, three. Uh, let me again put some stuff in the chest here. And then other than that, we just need nature essence. Three, I believe, in total. Now we've got enough LP here to get two. And then if we use our dagger, it's gonna take us all the way down to one heart, but it's gonna get us enough for our third and final nature essence. And so with that, we should finally be able to make the digester here. Let me go and grab one more nether quartz. Boom and boom. And then in here, we can go boom. Nice. And it used one of the two nutrients in there. Again, half of the beef. And so now we should be able to add this to our lineup of fleshy machines. I'm going to move the furnace here. Speaking of the furnace, I believe I'm uh, completely out of a pickaxe at the minute. So let me get another pickaxe here. We'll upgrade to iron. And then let's put down our digester so with the digester we should now be able to make nutrient bars to make nutrient bars you need nutrient paste and nutrient paste 
you can make in the digester with a whole variety of foods. The hair bale, though, seems surprisingly good as a food source for getting paste because it gets us nine paste at once, which is enough for us to get uh, nutrient bars right away. So as soon as we've got a little bit of wheat here, let's craft that wheat into a hair bale. And then using just one nutrient point in here, we should be able to turn the hay bale into nine nutrient paste. It is gonna take 30 seconds, so it's not the fastest thing in the world. But at the end of that, we can use that nine nutrient paste to make one nutrient bar, which is not great, but I think there's potential for automation here. I don't know how easy it is to automate the feeding of nutrients to the digester, but if we can give it different foods, I don't think wheat works. Does bread work? Bread does work. So if we can automate something like carrots or potatoes using the botany pots, we could potentially automate the feeding of the digester. And then if we get another botany pot that automates wheat, we could potentially automate the crafting of the hay bales, potentially, or we could automate potentially something else that can be digested. For example, wheat can just go in on its own. It's not quite as effective, but it could still work. And then from there, we could just automate the production of this nutrient paste. And this nutrient paste is useful in a couple of different ways. Of course, we can use it to make nutrient bars, which I feel like we might as well do here. Let me go and do something like this. That gets us just the one nutrient bar, but they are also good compared to every other food source available. So I do definitely think it's gonna be worth uh, looking to automate this going forward. Real quick though, if I get another nine and we get another hair bale going, excuse me, my friend, you belong in there. We can once again throw that in and then we can begin to look over here at getting the diamond. So in order to get the diamond, as I said at the start of the stream, we do need gem fragments, bioluminescent goo, and exotic dust. So the gem fragments, lapis, amethyst, nether quartz, prismarine, emerald, totem of undying, diamond, nether star, heart of the sea. I think lapis is the way we want to go. And uh, also I took most of the stuff out of here, by the way, and put it into this chest. And the lapis here just wants to go into the decomposer, right? And that's got a zero to one chance there. It's not particularly high, but we do have a lot of lapis and uh, if needs be, we can get a lot of food. And given the fact that we can feed bread to these machines, that's gonna make our lives a whole heck of a lot easier in terms of getting nutrients. So let's just drop the lapis in there. Let's quickly get just a bunch more wheat here and a stack of wheat later, we can get more bread over here. This is working very nicely through all of that lapis to get us both gem fragments and exotic dust. So now it's just bioluminescent goo that we need. And again, if we have just the one shroom light, which we do, we can use that again inside of the decomposer to get us five to nine of the goo. And that is almost everything. We do have to work this way around through to the diamond here. So for that, we're going to need a bio lab. The bio lab is made in the bio forge, just like the uh, digester was. And this one requires another living flesh, more flesh bits, eight bone fragments, four tough fibers, and some exotic dust. So let's take all those out. We've got the three required items up here for the diamonds. I did just do a bit of an inventory clear here. So a lot of the stuff that we just had is now in here. So I needed living flesh. Let me bookmark the bio lab. We also need two exotic dust, tough fibers. We can get from leather in the decomposer. That is completely fine. We should have a fair amount of leather, 36 in here. Let's do this. What are the odds on getting fibers? One to four, so we're probably going to need a few of those. Again, I'm not too worried about using up the nutrients too much now because we do have all the bread that we could ever really need to keep it going for as long as we need it to. And then back on the bio lab, flesh bits are easy enough. We should have those hanging around in here somewhere. We do, we've got loads of flesh bits. I'm gonna take the exact number we need so we don't end up clogging our inventory again. And then as far as burn fragments go, we have two here. You get four at a time, which is awkward because it means we're gonna to have to do two more batches of that, which is not gonna be tremendously difficult. It's just gonna require getting a fair bit more in the way of nature essence. Uh, and for that, I'm probably just gonna go and quickly harvest some more bamboo because we are running a little low on kelp. And a little bit of nature essence later. Boom, boom, and boom. That should be all the burn fragments that we need. Nice, over here, our tough fibers are ready. And so I think that we should have everything we need for the bio. Nice, let's, uh, we could do with a new platform for this. We're kind of uh, running out of space here for all of this stuff. I assume I could put it down here though, right next to the, the bio forge and the digester. So the bio lab is going to be used to acquire organic compound and then exotic compound. So the organic compound here is bile, 
and nutrients. And nutrients, this is why I wanted to get more nutrient paste here. So if we want to get the organic compound, we need nutrients. Nutrients can be made just by crafting the nutrient paste down, which is fantastic. And then the bile, we, I think, have left over. We got the bile gland there if we need it, but I thought that we had excess bile. We might not. That's fine. We can, of course, take this and throw it in here again, and that'll get us all the bile that we need. And then from there, we just need the exotic compound, which is a mineral fragment and two exotic dust. The exotic dust we have, the mineral fragment, we can get from iron. There's a few other things as well, but I feel like we might as well just go ahead and, uh, and chuck an iron ingot in there. Can I use copper? Yes, and we've got loads of copper. So you know what? Copper it is. You are done. Fantastic. Let's throw the copper in there. We've got 21 nutrients. That is not a problem at all. And so once that's done, chat, I think we're pretty much good to go on diamonds, actually. And with that, we'll unlock the next chapter of the quest book here. Mineral fragments acquired. And now back over in the bio lab, can I make organic compound? I'll bookmark that. And exotic compound, I'll also bookmark that. So the organic compound was one bile with one nutrients and an empty glass vial, which is glass and clay. I think we have glass left over from last episode. We do indeed, fantastic. Let's put you in here. And then of course, as per usual, let's give it a little bit of food and boom, organic compound. Then we're gonna put the organic compound back in, this time with two exotic dust and one, yeah, one mineral fragment. And of course, another loaf of bread. Oh, okay, it needs to be spread out. So this doesn't work, it has to be like this, I see. And that gets us exotic compound. So now we just need to put it all together, I believe, in the mixer? Yeah, so we just need to put together all of the items. Do we have what it takes? We need two exotic dust, which we have. Let me bookmark the diamond here again. Thankfully, you get 10 diamonds at a time. Three bioluminescent and three gem fragments. So three gem fragments, three bioluminescence, and then one exotic compound. We have everything that we need. We do need to take that last little bit of healing potion out of the basin there. That is not a problem. Let's do this and let's do this. Fantastic. And then let's drop all these in. I believe that is 10 diamonds, and we also get the glass file back as well. Look at that, fantastic. And so that does unlock for us the ability to start the pain questline, which opens up a whole host of options to us. We get access to the Dagger of Sacrifice. This is a, a pretty nifty little device that's going to allow us to kill mobs and not us if we want in terms of getting life points. So you can put mobs atop the altar, kill them with the Dagger of Sacrifice, and that will generate life essence as opposed to using our dagger on ourselves. We also unlock mob farming using mob grinding utilities. And of course, there's a uh, cursed earth down here as well, which I think is useful because I'm pretty sure that um, I saw in the Discord that there's no mob spawning in this pack. Like they just don't spawn at all normally. They only spawn on the cursed earth. So that's going to be useful. And of course, Simple Storage Network is going to help us tremendously in crafting and organizing our storage situation. In order to complete the first quest line, though, there are two things left to do. One is to get pig iron down here at the bottom. Actually, there are a few things left to do. There's also a quest to get 48 nutrient bars. I do think it is going to be worth seeing if we can't automate this. So I've been told that I can just put a botany pot directly on top of the digester here and that that just works. So if I do this, people also mentioned melons. I don't know if melons are like a great source or not. Let's have a look here. So we've got two nutrients. If I put a melon in there, that doesn't work. Okay, so it turns out melons are good, but not for the reason I thought. I did get the nature essence here, but I don't think potatoes are necessarily useful. The reason chat was suggesting melons is that melons in the top slot produce 18 nutrient paste, so twice as many as you get from the wheat. So you can put the melons up here and that will get us double the number in just a little bit more time. And it turns out you can pump the fuel into the side slots. So you'll see we're at 12 nutrients here. You can put, for example, bread in here, and that takes us up to 14. Even better than that, though, you can just feed nutrient paste back into the digester. You'll see right now it's on 14. If I put a nutrient paste in like that, it takes us up to 19. And I think this is kind of a self-fulfilling cycle in that what we should be able to do then, in that case, is grab another storage drawer. Ideally, I'd want a dark oak drawer. Thankfully, we do have dark oak being made automatically for us in here, so getting more dark oak planks is easy enough. And then if we have a chest, which of course we don't, that would be too easy. We can hopefully do something like this to get the dark oak draw. I'm gonna put the dark oak draw down 
Let's say here. For now, we'll move this. We'll probably move the whole setup. Actually, you know what? I say that. Let's just move the whole setup. Let me let me get rid of this. I assume we can break this. It does appear that a hoe, surprisingly, is the device of choice for picking this up. Perfect. What we're going to do, we're going to move this and we'll move this as well. So I'm being told you have to extract from the bottom, which would make sense if it's kind of uh, standard Minecraft stuff. So let's do... Let's put you here. Let's put the draw required for it here. And then we're going to use item pipes to move things around. The reason I put this a little further away is that by default, the item pipes work on a nearest first basis. So they should try and put things into the nearest inventory first. And so my hope here is that if we're going to extract from the bottom like this, we're going to extract from the bottom of this guy, and then we want to go into the side like that. And you know what? I'm going to move this one further forward just to be safe. What I'll do is I'll put the draw down right about here like that and so what i'm hoping is that because this input here is closer than this input i'm hoping all of the first bits of paste that we make just go right back into the digester and then eventually they go into the dark oak drawer once the digester is kind of full on its internal nutrient buffer in here all we're going to do is we're going to place down the hopper again like so we're going to take our farmland we'll put that in as well and then we just need a melon seed which we should be able to get if we have any melon slices left which i don't think we do because i crafted them all into glistening melon slices but once again it should be as simple as just placing and breaking a melon fantastic and then if we craft those into seeds we can indeed let's then do something like this and once that's grown that's going to go ahead and start putting melons in here and i'm hopeful that if we set the bottom here to extract like so that it should pull out any paste that's made and it should put it into this slot. Of course, we do have to kickstart it. So that takes it up to 25. And hopefully, we see this number go up before any nutrient paste makes its way into this draw. Okay, moment of truth. Are we going to go up from here? 24. That gets extracted out. And look at that. So it's extracting it. It's taking it out. And it's putting it right back in. And again, because it does nearest first, basically, for a little while, we're not going to get anything from this. We're just going to get this bar to fill up. But then once this bar is filled up, it's then going to start filling this draw up. And the Twitch chat is making a, a fair point in that we can upgrade to a compacting draw here because the compacting draw, which is pretty easy to make, by the way, it just requires two pistons, which requires that we have yet more wood. It's not a problem. Let's quickly get two of these. One and ideally two. We're missing cobblestone of all things. That is also not a problem. We do have cobblestone being generated for us. The tricky part at the minute is just getting to that cobblestone, which is in this draw here. I think I have to like click on the front of that draw, which I don't think I can do from my current position. Fine, let me try and get up there. I keep putting down planks or, or uh, cobblestone over here to get up, but then I have to break them again whenever I, uh, I go to, to use my mixer. So we could definitely do with getting a better way to access this uh, draw up here. But for now, if we put this back in our chest, we should be able to make that uh, second piston. We should be able to use that second piston to make a compacting draw. And the benefit of the compacting draw is that it's gonna kind of auto craft all of the nutrient paste into uh, nutrient bars for us because what it'll do is it'll hold the nutrient paste to the bottom slot and it should have uh, the nutrient bars available in the top slot it basically allows you to do a three by three craft automatically and yeah with that we should basically have nutrient paste automated really the only thing that we would maybe want to do now is try and make this faster potentially via the duplicating of the botany pots if we put down more botany pots we could have all of those feed into the top of the digester to get melons faster Right now, it takes 57 seconds to grow a melon. You are guaranteed to get the melon, but it takes 57 seconds to grow the melon, whereas it only takes 37 seconds to consume the melon. And so I think in an ideal world here, if we can get a, a second hopping botany pot down, which we should definitely be able to do, we made a bunch of them at the start of the episode, we could feed both of those into the top of this digester, and we should be producing melons faster than the digester can use them, and therefore we're maximizing the amount of nutrient paste that we can make and if i'm not mistaken i think that the hopping botany pot stores the items within it you'll see here that it is storing the melon seeds in there i think that's fine i'm pretty sure that if it uh, fills up with melon seeds it will just continue to produce melons and not the seeds which i think is is a-okay i am gonna break this i think what we can do though i think we can just have the item pipes pulled directly out of the botany pot if we do this 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 and this I believe that we can then fill this with farmland, put in the melon seeds, and that should just work if we set this and this to extract. We'll see if that actually does work in a second, if we get any melons or not. And uh, also we do wanna make sure we duplicate that, of course, with another 
not coarse dirt, but ideally just regular dirt, of course, with our hoe. Let's put you in there. Let's do one of these and let's do one of those. Perfect. All right, that should be us good to go. And hopefully we should now see the number of melons in here going up. And we're already at 648 out of a thousand nutrients there. I guess one thing we could also potentially do if we wanted to is we could set up like this line of machines, excluding the uh, primordial cradle. We could set up the other machines close by and just have all of the nutrient paste pump into these as well to keep these full for whenever we need them. Not that I think that's as necessary because we can also just take the paste out and put it in whatever machine we need at any time. And speaking of paste, let's take the uh, 18 paste that we had a second ago and look at that, nutrient bars. Nice, that is very cool and very useful. This is totally working. We're actually gaining melons, like the number of melons is going up. And yeah, this is all just working as intended. We're almost at a um, thousand nutrients, which is fantastic. And then we're gonna start getting automatic nutrient bars. Good stuff, good stuff. So that is that taken care of. And that should be hopefully food kind of taken care of at least for a little while here. Very soon we'll have 48 nutrient bars. That's that quest kind of just complete. There is another quest down here for pig iron. I don't necessarily know what we need for the pig iron just yet, but in order to make it, we need a rocky dirt and four nature essence. We did just make three nature essence for those potatoes that we didn't end up making. And I believe a fourth nature essence is just something like that. And then rocky dirt, we should already have, I think we do indeed. If we do something like this, we get a pig seed. And I'm told that the pig iron recipe is just right clicking iron onto a pig. So let's give that a try. If I do this and I do this, we can hopefully grow this pig somewhat quickly. And uh, thankfully, unlike the pandas, this pig does grow pretty quickly. Those pandas took forever with the watering can compared to the, the cows and the pigs. And I'm gonna give this a try and see if right clicking a pig with the iron does just produce pig iron. As per usual, ultimine to release. And then I assume we have to feed this guy up. I assume we can't, yeah, we can't just use the, uh, the ingot. So we'll probably have to wait for this guy to grow before we can give it a try, but he'll only take like 20 minutes to fully grow. So we'll come back next time and we'll feed that guy the iron to see if that works. And other than that, the only quests left to do are the steam engine quest, which shouldn't be too difficult. I don't know if we'll do this today, but it's definitely something we should look at doing if we want to expand our create system past the point of these uh, water wheels here. Although the water wheels are very good to the point where I don't even know if the uh, steam engine is necessarily worth it, especially given how easy and cheap the water wheels are to make. But I think next time we'll come back, Chant, and uh, we'll utilize our diamonds to start working on the pain section of the quest line. We'll potentially get a mob farm if that looks like it's worth it with the dagger of sacrifice. It might be, it might also not be, especially if the nutrient bars come in fast enough, the sacrificing might just be more worth it. We will look at getting new runes, I think, sooner rather than later. And we can also look at upgrading the incense altar at some point in the not so distant future. And I think we'll also look at getting into simple storage networks as soon as possible as well, because that's gonna make it just so much easier for us to craft and, uh, and access all of our storage going forward. We're not gonna have to rely on the uh, double click to search function. And we're also getting a little bit uh, cramped on this platform as well. So I think sooner rather than later, we should also look at uh, expanding the platform out, making it a little bit larger, maybe getting a second or third level as well. And we also might look at uh, kind of redecorating a little bit with the, uh, the warped stem here. Between streams, I'll also probably look at getting the uh, crimson fungus as well up and running so we can maybe look at using some of the uh, the warped and uh, crimson woods around the base for a bit more of a, uh, a thematic blood magic base but that is a problem for future isaac for now i am gonna go ahead and wrap up this episode of project sacrifice there